Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. Microsoft has released the next optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 24H2 to the release preview channel insiders for final testing. So because it is in its final stages of being tested in preview, I would suggest that the update will start rolling out sometime next week, Tuesday, or into the rest of that last week of May 2025, when it gets released to the general public. Now, this is a jam-packed update, and the update is KB5058499, and there are 24 new features, and all the new features are rolling out gradually. And we've also got a couple of fixes rolling out gradually. And then we get fixes that are rolling out to everybody with the update when it does roll out in the next couple of days. So because these features are rolling out gradually, you may or may not see them at the get-go. So just keep that in mind. Now, first of all, we get one, two, three, four, five new features for click to do, which is a Microsoft Copilot Plus PC feature. Microsoft focusing a lot on those Copilot Plus PCs, where Microsoft is introducing more intelligent text actions in Click To Do on AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs. So you can use your Win key and mouse click or Win and Q to select a text block and then drag to select the text that you want and you'll see options to summarize, create a bulleted list or to help you rewrite your text and sticking with click to do the next new feature is microsoft says ask copilot is a new action with click to do click to do offers the ask copilot and selecting it opens microsoft copilot with your content in the prompt box then the third new feature for click to do is if your PC has pen and inking capabilities, you can configure the shortcut button to open click to do with a single click, double click, or press and hold through settings, Bluetooth devices, pen and Windows ink. So obviously you need the relevant hardware for that. And then the fourth new feature for click to do is you can add click to do as one of your four apps in the pen menu on your PC. And then the last click to do new feature is click to do can now perform intelligent text actions in Spanish and French. And then we have two new features rolling out for Copilot, where you can open Copilot on Windows with Win and C, and you can personalize your Copilot key and Win and C at any time with the existing customized Copilot key on keyboard under settings, personalization, text input. And the next new feature for Copilot is press to talk with Copilot, where you can hold the Copilot key or Win and C for two seconds if you don't have a Copilot key. You can also press Escape to stay silent for a few seconds to end the call, or you can also use Alt and Spacebar to talk with Copilot on Windows. And there's a new cross device resume feature where you can resume working on OneDrive files from your phone on your Windows 11 PC. With Microsoft saying, with this feature, you will get a notification asking you if you want to pick up where you left off editing a OneDrive file that you last viewed or edited on your phone within a five-minute time window preceding unlocking your PC. And there's a new energy saver feature for IT admins who can now manage energy saver settings on Windows 11 PCs through group policies and MDM configurations using Microsoft Intune. And there's a new graphics feature, which if you have the relevant hardware, which is HDR support for display, with the new feature being a clearer label for use HDR that better explains which media types are supported, and the ability to stream HDR video even when HDR is turned off on PCs with Dolby Vision, a new toggle lets you turn Dolby Vision on or off independently of HDR. And I've posted a couple of videos regarding these features we're talking about today when they were still very much in preview. So um, if you do want some more information, just do a search accordingly on the channel if you'd like some more info. And then for Narrator, 
which is an accessibility feature. There's a new feature where Microsoft says you can enhance digital accessibility with AI-powered image descriptions in Narrator on Copilot Plus PC. So once again, another Copilot Plus PC feature. And then there is improved Windows Search. Once again, the first new feature for Windows Search is for Copilot Plus PCs, where Microsoft is beginning to roll out the ability to type a setting you're looking for in the Windows search box on your taskbar without needing to remember the exact setting name. And then if you find yourself in the EEA, you can now find cloud photos using improved Windows search on the taskbar, also for Copilot Plus PCs. And once again, if you are in the EEA, there's improved support for web search providers, including increased discoverability for a new feature for search on the taskbar. And then settings gets three new features where the Microsoft says the first for settings is you'll be able to find commonly asked questions about your PC and Windows 11 in the new FAQ section on the settings system about page. I've also posted on that previously. There's also a new dialogue to rename your printer under settings, Bluetooth and devices, printers and scanners that now matches the Windows 11 look and feel. And here's a nice one that I'm actually quite happy to see, which I have posted on previously. Mouse settings are now easier to access under settings, accessibility, mouse and mouse pointer and touch with no need to open control panel, according to Microsoft. So they're migrating some of the mouse settings, more mouse. So Microsoft is migrating more mouse settings over to the new settings app, where you'll find updated icons for mouse pointer speed and enhanced mouse pointer precision, plus options for customizing the mouse indicator, pointer trails, and hover activation time. So I'm quite happy to see that moving into settings, although I do still use the control panel on almost on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's a new taskbar feature for admins. You can configure taskbar policies so users can unpin specific apps, ensuring they are not repinned during the next policy refresh. And then we have two fixes for the taskbar. The first is when using tab and shift to move keyboard focus around the taskbar, if you go backwards at least once, you can get keyboard focus stuck on the taskbar frame. The second is keyboard focus may be unexpectedly set to widgets in the taskbar on login, which can make widgets invoke. And then we get two new features and a fix for voice access, which is also an accessibility feature. The first new feature, Microsoft says voice access now includes an in-product experience that highlights new features and improvements. You can use the settings menu to open or dismiss it any time. And the second new feature for voice access is you can find voice access under accessibility in quick settings. So when it rolls out under accessibility in quick settings, there's also going to be a voice access entry at the lower right corner of your screen near the clock which I'm quite happy to see, always in favor of accessibility improvements. And then there's a fix, voice access may freeze with error working on it when dictating. And there is a new feature for voice typing, which I have posted on previously, and I'll leave this video linked down below and in the end screen, where you can now control the profanity filter. So when you turn it on, it masks profanity with asterisks. When you turn it off, words appear as spoken. Check the video out for more information. Windows Share gets three new features. And I'm just going to go through this quickly because I have covered these in detail on the channel. The first one is you can make last minute edits such as cropping, rotating and adding filters to images shared through the Windows Share window. The second new feature is when you drag a local file from File Explorer or your desktop, a tray appears at the top of your screen. So you can drop the file into a suggested app or select more, which is the three dotted menu to open the Windows Share window. And then the third new feature is you can add apps that support sharing directly to the right-click menu for local files in File Explorer or on the desktop. Three new features rolling out for Windows Share, which Microsoft seems to be focusing on quite a lot these days. 
And there's also an audio fix where the startup sound may not play on boot, although it is enabled. That's been addressed. And they also fix certain USB devices that can become disconnected after sleep until you reboot your PC. And they've got a couple of under the hood um, fixes which um, are taking place under the hood. I'm not going to mention that because then it's just going to make this video far too long. And then for display, there's a fix where unexpected scaling and window position changes may occur after sleep resume for some devices. There's a printer fix. Non-admin users can't uninstall printers they, that they have added. That's been addressed. There's a Windows Hello fix. When using Windows Hello for business facial recognition, the camera may unexpectedly fail after waking the PC from sleep blocking logging using this method. There's a camera fix where the settings may crash when interacting with content under settings, Bluetooth and devices, cameras. There's a file explorer fix where if you have disconnected network drives when doing a search from home, it may prevent searches from executing and you remain on home. So guys, those are all the new features, 24 new features in total and a bunch of fixes that are all rolling out gradually with this next update. So you may or may not get them when the update rolls out if you do decide to install the update because it is optional. And then just to mention three fixes rolling out normally. There are a lot more, but just to keep this video not from getting too lengthy. The first one I think you may be interested in, there's a fix for BitLocker. This update addresses an issue where devices with BitLocker on removable drives could encounter a blue screen error after resuming from sleep or hybrid booting. There's a fix for boot menu screens where the update addresses the issue where early boot screens such as BitLocker pin, BitLocker recovery key and boot menu screens render slowly. And there's a graphics kernel fix where they fixed an issue where some game titles become unresponsive after upgrading to Windows 11 version 22H2. So those are rolling out normally. There are a couple of extras taking place under the hood. So guys, that's more or less what to expect with our next optional C-release update, KB5058499, that will be rolling out for Windows 11 24H2 over the next coming days. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.